Okay, everybody, we are back. There was no end credit cutscene, so that is the end of the game. This is now my review of Star Trek Elite Force 2. First things first, thank you to all of the uh, directors and writers and producers and uh, game coders and VFX and uh, artists and uh, writers and just everybody who uh, made this game. Thank you for that. I know it is now old and it was in 2003 and um, a lot of those people are doing other things now, but uh, back then, uh, thank you so much for making this game. Uh, a credit to all the people who put this game together. You knew what you were doing. You kept the heart of Star Trek, and that's very important. Um, and you made a great Star Trek game, one that is remembered forever as one of the best up there for a Star Trek game. I thoroughly enjoyed this game. This was a lot of fun. I would say more so than the first one. Yes, it's dated now, but when this came out, it wasn't. Uh, maybe a little bit, but still, at the time, this would have been, you know, pretty incredible. Now, it does look dated and feels dated, especially the, I would say, the combat system feels very dated. It feels very stiff. Uh, area of effect is a, a an issue you need to be very accurate and then sometimes your hits actually don't make when you think they're going to make and uh, grenades don't kill when you think they're going to kill things like that and then the feedback from when a weapon hits the enemy it's a lot better in this game than the first one uh, you can actually see now that they are taking damage but it's still a little difficult to tell if you're or how much damage you're actually doing to them and so forth without like a damage bar. The bosses had a damage bar, but not all of them. Some of them did not. So I'd say the combat system is a little clunky, um, but it has that nostalgic Quake 3 feeling because it is based on the Quake 3 Team Arena game engine. Uh, heavily modified from that, however. The very first one, Star Trek Voyager Elite Force, was based on the Quake 3 Team Arena engine with no modifications. That one was um, definitely uh, old school Quake 3 style. This one's a little more evolved, but not a whole lot. You still get that fast paced first person shooter style gameplay. The kind of gameplay that you really just, you run and gun. That's the Quake 3 style, the Doom style, you run through and you just, it's a whole bunch of things shooting at you and you just, you know, go through and, and kill things as fast as you can. However, there were a few moments in this game where you didn't need to do that. You did need to slow down a little bit, especially uh, the things you needed to sniper, the enemies that would be up in towers toward the end or in other areas where uh, you would need to like duck and cover and do a little bit of snipering from a distance. So there were some of those you had to watch out for. Um, so that's overall gameplay on it uh, and, and graphics wise obviously I can't grade it for its graphics uh, today it, it, it doesn't look that great um, but back then it would have looked decent for the time period today I am able to play it on a very high resolution excuse me very high resolution uh, with uh, 8x AA and 16x AF and it you know looks as good as it can I'd say the downside is probably the texture quality. Um, the animations obviously are of the time, uh, as good as it can get for the Quake 3 engine. They modified this game to have better mouth movement, and um, that is a big improvement over the first game. The first game had very blocky heads and necks, and like uh, their mouths and stuff didn't move, they just, you know, up and down kind of thing. Uh, this one is a little better in that regard. Uh, so I did enjoy that. Uh, but now let's talk about the uh, actual storyline of this game. Now that we've talked about the mechanics of it, let's talk about the storyline. I liked the idea that it is our original team from Star Trek Voyager Elite Force. Uh, we pick up and we are thrust, being thrust into the Alpha Quadrant from the Delta Quadrant, so it's a direct sequel. We are in the Borg Sphere and we have to fight our way through the Borg Sphere to release Voyager so that we can bust through and get out of the sphere. Now, 
Some people did bring up in the comments in that first part of the game, wouldn't Voyager have had those advanced technologies from the future Janeway? Wouldn't it have had the uh, shielding, a blade of armor shielding all around it, and those like transphasic torpedoes or whatever it was using? Um, and if that's so, how could it get trapped inside the Borg sphere? It should have been able to get out with those things. So yeah, maybe a slight continuity error there has to take place in order to have our hazard team jump onto the Borg sphere and free Voyager. But it does give it a nice plot to bring us into this game connected from the last game. It gives us a transition from the Delta Quadrant to the Alpha Quadrant. Right? And then we bust through and we're in the Alpha Quadrant and then I like the idea that once we come through, it's like, okay, now what? No more Voyager. We're done with that. What happens to our team? I mean, we're all friends. We're all part of a team. Well, no, they're going to split us up because now that's not useful anymore. They're going to split us up. And so for like two years or something, that's what we do. But then it is Picard who comes to our rescue. Enterprise E in Picard and says, you know what, I see value in this team. I'm going to bring them on board my ship. And of course I accept. And then as we get on the Enterprise E, we encounter all kinds of adventures with the Atrexians and the Idril and the Exomorphs. And uh, at first you're dealing with just those species quite a bit. And you really don't see the twist coming with the Romulans. That is a cool twist. We get to go to a lot of different places in this game, unlike the first game. So in the first game, we were stuck in the Delta Quadrant in like a pocket of null space. So it had a very limited, you know, area that it could explore. We could only hop from ship to ship that was inside that null space. But with this game, we could go to different planets and not only visit, visit ships and star bases, but also the planet's surfaces as well. And that was new. We had outdoor open environments in this game. And that's what we did not have in the last one. So that was a big improvement and cool to see. A nice evolution from the first game. And uh, then we find out the whole thing about the exomorphs. Uh, the, you know, first it's a, a mystery who, who are attacking the Atrexians. Then we find out, oh, it's these exomorph creatures. And then we find out, oh, they're connected to the Idril. And the Idril are being oppressed by the Atrexians. Uh, but it was really the Idril who made the exomorphs. And then they destroyed the Idril. And then the, the Atrexians oppressed the Idril. And, you know, this huge storyline. And then the Romulans come in wanting to use there are this branch or uh, outcast branch of the Romulans want to use the exomorphs. Um, it's just twist and turns all through that storyline. And then through that storyline, we get to visit, like I said, so many different places I didn't see coming. We got to go to, you know, star uh, Atrexian bases. We got to go to uh, planet surfaces. We got to go to um, a Klingon base. We had to get we, the whole Olmag thing with the Ferengi. That came out of like a left turn. I didn't see that twist coming. We had to interrogate a Ferengi. Um, then we went to um, a Romulan base. We had to infiltrate a Romulan colony, you know, and pretend to be Romulan and go through that. And then that introduced some new gameplay elements like the bioscan, having to use the bioscan to avoid the detection. That was a new uh, mechanic. Um, we didn't use the structural integrity one as much in this one. This one was mostly the bioscan. Um, and then, oh yeah, I forgot the, uh, the, the whole uh, Idril base, the, the Idril bases. There was like a whole mission where we were on like an Idril world. And we had to go through the factories and all that of the Idril stations. Um, and that was a lot of like traps and uh, platforming and different kinds of puzzles and stuff there that we had to do and the, they had the bioscanner there too uh, but we didn't use the uh, structural integrity as much as in, in this game but it was there it was still a feature still a function and then they introduced a new one to us a gas sensor where we had to like see this gas coming out of the wall and phaser it shut 
that was a new gameplay experience. They they introduced to us so many new types of uh, gameplay mechanics in this game compared to the first one. Um, mini games. We also had some new mini games. You know, you had to connect those power things, uh, flip them to the right way, get the blue power flowing and the yellow power flowing. Some of those are difficult. Uh, then you had to get um, the other one, the wavy one that was going up and down, and you had to get it aligned just right. Uh, so there were some... That, that one was kind of easy. Uh, now, if you were playing on a more uh, intense difficulty mode, those would be timed. Yes, they would be timed. You would have a countdown timer that you would have to get them done. And that just adds more stress. I don't need that. It was hard enough doing some of those puzzles without a timer. I don't want a timer. Too too intense for me. No way, Jose. No way. I was fine without the timer. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, those could get really hard if you were playing on a more difficult mode because you would have to do those, especially those power transfer ones where you flip the little pipes around. Um, th that could take a very long time to complete, but if you're on a time limit, oh, could you imagine the stress? No, I don't need that. I'm trying to enjoy the game. I don't need stress. <laughs> So all of that was fun. We really got to do a whole lot. And then we meet the uh, final level here today. And boy, was it intense. We had to take out so many like high level, high health creatures um, that it was crazy. There are two of them, especially the ones that were flying around, man, they take so much of your ammo and I was not prepared. And in that last one, they put you in a small room that you could only just circle around in. You could just circle around. There wasn't anywhere else to go. Uh, and there was no health terminal. I mean, you had to kill this thing by just dodging and trying to get a shot on it when you can because there was no health terminals. Um, so that was really difficult to, to throw that on you. Uh, then the final boss, of course, was the commander. And once I figured out the tactic there, it wasn't too bad. But first, it was hard figuring out the tactic. If you just try to keep shooting the little spider exomorphs, um, you'll just get overwhelmed. You saw me. I got overwhelmed with them. So the idea really is just ignore them and just keep healthing up. And then when the little flaps open at the top, shoot the commander. That worked for that. So I thought, okay, well, if that worked for that, maybe that'll also work on the final, final boss, the um, sentient, it, uh, the sentient exomorph. So for that one, I kind of did the same thing. I just tried to ignore the little spider creatures and heal up when I could, and then just shoot the main monster guy with everything I had. That was pretty much it. But ammo was, did continue to be a problem. On harder difficulties, this could be a very difficult game to play. Very difficult, with, and you would need a lot of skill and just really being real tedious. And I don't want to do that. I don't need that kind of stress. I'm trying to enjoy the game. That's why I always play it on easy mode. I'm in it for the storyline. I'm in it to enjoy it and have fun. I don't want to be stressed out. I don't need to be stressed out. I got enough stress in my life. This is supposed to be a stress reliever. <laughs> so that's why I play on easy mode. I definitely don't want to play on a harder mode than that. Um, so all of that was great. Um, I love the ending. Um, and of course... There is another feature of this game that I also did not see coming. I did not think it would have, and that is choosable dialogue options. I always like it when games have that uh, because it means you can have different paths. Like if you choose one option, it goes down a different path. You choose a different option, it goes down a different path. That creates replayability and allows you to replay the game and make different choices to see what would happen. So the first game did not have anything like that. This game seemed to have some stuff like that. We actually got to make dialogue choices and choose the dialogue. And I think it would make a difference. I think. I don't know because I haven't played it twice to find out. But I think it would. Especially between Clea and... Um, I'm blanking. I've been talking so long and playing so long today now. I'm blanking on her name. Telsa. Tels Telsia. Between Clea and Telsia, you clearly had an option to go fall in love with Clea or Telsia. And, um, well, I chose Telsia. 
but it's very cool they give you the option to choose Telsia and they and it's an either or situation you go to this one or this one and so that was very cool that that was thrown in there gives you just a little more depth to the characters and to the game overall so I liked that branching dialogue choice and giving us dialogue options uh, that's very cool for a game like this at this time period um, and again the first game didn't have it so that was cool to see in this game so once again Star Trek Elite Force 2 came out in 2003 the sequel to Star Trek Star Trek Star Trek Voyager Elite Force I have played both games now you can find a complete playthrough of Star Trek Voyager Elite Force on my channel search for it it's there there's a whole playlist with it and then you've got the playlist that has Star Trek Elite Force 2 in it as well if you missed any of the videos from this one uh, in this playthrough I did things a little different than I did previously I did like hour to hour and a half long playthroughs let me know if you enjoy that format or if you like shorter videos um, I'm interested in your feedback I tried something different here going with this longer format and uh, you can let me know longer format means less videos on the channel but longer videos so let me know what you thought of that um, and also let me know what you think of this game and did you play it when it was new have you played it since then I'm curious uh, because I don't think I did play it when it was new but I played it now and I definitely wish I had played it back then because it would have been a lot of fun but then I couldn't have shown you guys because they didn't have YouTube then <laughs> but now I can and I'm very happy I got it so there you go that is my full review of Star Trek Elite Force 2 I thoroughly enjoyed the game give it an A plus recommend everybody play it just keep in mind it's gonna feel dated but it's the storyline and the gameplay that make it what it is